coming back to um, my friends uh, Tversky and Kahneman, in their 1971 paper, which is one of their earliest papers, uh, the, it's called Belief in the Law of Small Numbers. So mathematicians know about the law of large numbers. If you have a large enough data set, you can draw inference about what generally happens. Of course, we're people, so we see three things happen in a row, and we jump all over it and say, oh my god, trend. And Kahneman and Tversky understood this. They wrote about it in their paper, Belief in the Law of Small Numbers, and this is a quote from their paper that I especially like. The true believer in the law of small numbers commits his multitude of sins against the logic of statistical inference in good faith. Here's Tversky understanding that you should not draw too much, uh, you draw too, too dramatically on small samples. Here's Tversky with a small sample, finite strings of shooting uh, records and applying um, a null hypothesis which is based on having an infinite sample. One of the most fundamental uh, elements of the work in Kahneman and Tversky is that there are many types of human error that are just uncorrectable. You can be smart, you can be educated, you can be on the watch for them, you can try not to make these mistakes and you will make them anyway. It's hard to walk away with the message of the story that, you know, even the great people make mistakes when they actually still got the result right. They were right. There is no hot hand. So they, even though they made this famous mistake, <laughs> they got the right result. Well, this might have been a better story if it had reversed from the point of view of sensationalists, but from the point of view of science, it's really all stories are equally good. And this is another kind of important lesson that uh, non-negative results are actually just as important as positive results in terms of pushing forward our understanding of things. Just coming back to your timing thing though, that is a point worth making. Your data doesn't show what time in the game those baskets were shot. So some of those strings of ones that are there, if they all happened within 40 seconds of each other and the other stuff is more spread out, that could indicate there was a there was a, a moment when you were in the zone. Could indicate it. You'd have to reformulate your idea of what a hot hand is, then create uh, a, a null hypothesis, an ordinary against which to test your observation, and if you, every time you make a change like that, you give the opportunity to give a different answer. It might also be harder data to collect than the, the, the second that each basket went in. Not anymore. Uh, it's uh, apparently very easy to get and hoping to look at more uh, versions of this. Uh, one other uh, cautionary tale though, if you look hard enough you find stuff. So of course if we keep changing the definition and exploring new data sets, again by pure chance, we are going to get a result. That thing's called data mining and, you know, one beware. Last, one last question. Um, you know, I know you do a lot of things to do with economics and big pictures and economies and things that are quite important to the world. But you're also spending a lot of time here looking at basketball stats, and you know, you're this professor at Berkeley. Why is it important to look at basketball stats? Well, basketball is fascinating. I mean, you don't need a reason more than enjoyment to look at it, but there is a super interesting connection between this study and what goes on in financial markets. There's a well-known phenomenon called the gambler's fallacy. So here's this idea that if you're down and you're down and you're down and you're down, you're due for a reversal. Okay, you expect to see something change. You expect to see a reversal rather than a continuation. Now, if we were going back to our, our ideal case where we're flipping unbiased independent coins, of course, a reversal is no more likely than a continuation no matter what you've just seen. However, in finite data sets, looking backward, in finite data sets, we do see more reversals and continuations exactly because of the irregularities that we were looking at uh, with the end of the data set, with the nature of the finite string. So it's possible and could be tested, say, by people who in behavioral economics who experiment on humans, that the reinforcement out of finite data sets is actually causing us to expect reversals rather than continuations. So maybe the gambler's fallacy, which still seems to be a fallacy, has come just because we're being taught uh, to expect it by the data that we see.